In Die Hard 2, John McClane is at Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C., waiting for his wife's plane to land so he can spend Christmas with the in-laws. But two things happen. First of all, there's a horrific blizzard resulting in zero visibility. The other is a group of mercenaries, led by William Sadler, takes over the air traffic control system. In a matter of minutes, his wife's plane and in several other incoming flights will crash due to loss of fuel. So it's up to McLean to step in and take action, despite the odds against it. But we are just up to our ass in Terrace again, Jeff. Like the first film, the sequel was based on a book, 58 Minutes, by Walter Wagner. But with a few creative liberties, they turned it into Die Hard 2. Due to his obligation with bringing Tom Clancy's The Hunt for Red October to the screen, John McTiernan was unable to perform his duty as a director of Die Hard 2. So the task fell to finish director Rennie Harlan, who had just finished the fourth Nightmare on Elm Street movie, the most successful of the series at that time. The film was shot in four states, including Denver, Colorado, which was unseasonably snowless during the shooting. So most of the snow had to be created artificially. Though this film was successful when it opened in 1990, fans consider it a weak entry in the series because they're basically putting McLean through the same situation as the first film. Even Bruce Willis considers this his least favorite film in the series, but I found it to be quite entertaining. But the series didn't end there. 